Hi, Jeff here, and welcome back to the Diva 4.0 tutorial series. Today we'll continue with ArcSim, and we'll learn how to create custom materials, constructions, and schedules using the ArcSim Grasshopper components. So you'll, you'll remember from previous tutorials, when creating a thermal zone, um, if we click on the settings, we have different schedules that are um, on our default list for people, internal gains, for equipment, lighting, and we have a list of default options for different constructions. And we can add to these existing lists by modifying the library, and we can do it using the library editor within the dialog box and changing it using this interface. However, we can also create custom materials, schedules, and so forth using the Grasshopper components, and that's what we'll, fo we'll focus on for this tutorial. Let's start off with the, creating a new material, so we can place the opaque material component onto the canvas. Now for this tutorial, let's create a material called fiberglass, a fiberglass insulation, since it's not in the um, default list of existing materials. So I'll place a panel on the canvas, and for the name input, I'll go ahead and call it fiberglass. And for the next input, the roughness, I'll go ahead and just leave the default value. Now these next three inputs we can get uh, by referencing manufacturer's data. Um, we can also reference some information in the Energy Plus documentation, for example. So if um, we go to the C drive under the Diva folder, there are a few different Energy Plus folders, and I'll just go ahead and pick this middle one, the version 7.2, which contains some um, documentation that could be useful for um, different materials. And under data sets, I'll go ahead and right click on the um, the ASHRAE 2005 ha Handbook of Fundamentals Materials IDF file. The IDF format is um, the extension that's used by Energy Plus. Um, but we can simply right click on this and edit this file, view it at least using a uh, kind of text viewer. I have no Pad++, but you can look at it using um, any kind of text viewer. And I already have this open, so you'll see that um, I'm, I've already scrolled down to um, in about line 750 or so. Uh, we have a few different glass fiber materials, insulation materials. And I'll go ahead and reference this middle one. So for my material input, I'm going to give it a conductivity or a, you know the rate of heat transfer in um, SI units uh, of 0 0.036, a density of 140 kilograms per cubic meter, and then I'll give it a specific heat of 960 joules per kilograms Kelvin. And I can input these uh, using this component. So I'll just copy and paste this uh, text panel, and for the conductivity, I'll input 0 0.036. The density was 140. And the specific heat was 960. Since an insulation material, since it's an insulation material, the the conductivity is actually going to be the most important thing here. But um, we'll input this this information anyway. And um, for this tutorial, we can leave the thermal absorptance, the solar absorptance, the visual uh, visible absorptance, and the rest of these parameters um, the default values, since they're not really going to have a bearing on the performance of this uh, material. Now that this material is defined, we can uh, add it to the library of uh, for um, our ArcSim um, simulations, and we can do that by placing the library component onto the canvas. And we'll be plugging in our um, the examples that we create in this tutorial. We'll, we'll be plugging all of them into this library component so that they're stored um, in the backup file and the in the file the behind the scenes library file. So I'll go ahead and plug this into the material input of our library component. Now we can use this fiberglass material as one layer within a larger custom uh, material construction. And to do that, we um, can place a construction layer component onto the canvas. Now, construction assembly in ArcSim is um, really just a series of layers that are merged together for um, of different materials, and they're combined. Each material has a different thickness. Um, they're made into a layer and then merged. I'll use the merge component for this. They're merged together to create a list of different layers um, that will then be plugged into a, an opaque construction component, into the layer input of an opaque construction component. So uh, an opaque construction is really just a layering of different materials with assigned thicknesses, and they're done in the, in the order from um, exterior in the beginning of the list to the interior um, at the end of the list. 
So let's create a layer for our fiberglass uh, material. So if I click on this material um, drop-down parameter, we get a list of all the materials that we have in our library. And the newest materials will, will appear at the bottom. And I can click on the arrows in the top and the bottom to scroll through this, through this list. However, the bottom arrow, this list can be resized and it's outside the screen for this tutorial, but the fiberglass material does in fact show up here at the end of this list. And if I select it, it will be um, input. If I hover over, hover over the input, it appears as this material input. Now I'll go ahead and give this material a thickness. Let's say this is the, um, the cavity of a stud wall. So I'll make this um, 0 0.089 um, meters, which is about 3.5 inches. And I'll input that for the thickness. And um, so if I hover over layer, you see that it says that there's one locally defined value, material, fiberglass, and the thickness is 0 0.09 meters of a rounding. Now let's make this into a, um, an overall assembly and the fiberglass will be in the middle. Let's say that there's sheeting um, on the exterior and let's say that there is um, chips and plaster on the interior. So for my sheeting, I'm going to go ahead and select, I'm going to scroll down this list for the material and select um, chips and fiberglass face sheeting and I'll make this thickness 0 0.013, about a half inch. And I want this to be on the top of my list because it's exterior. So I'll zoom into the merge component and I'll add another input to the top here. And I'll in input that layer output into that first input. And then for my interior, I want this to be gypsum plaster. So I'll scroll down to the end of the list where I know I have that um, gypsum plaster material. It's outside of the, just outside of the viewport of my tutorial screen, but I'll select it and you'll see that it's showing up here in the input and I'll make this as well 0.013. And I'll plug that in. So that's on the inside now of my material. So I have three um, inputs in the list, and um, my exterior material is uh, the sheeting, the, the middle material is the fiberglass, and the inside material is the gypsum plaster. And I could review all of this by plugging in the um, layer output into a panel, and you can see that I um, this generates a list of my material inputs and their corresponding thicknesses. So now I can give this a name. I'll go ahead and call this um, stud wall. And um, I'm going to say that this is a stud wall, but we're going to be, this is a stud wall um, taken through the insulation. And I'll call it at insulation. And we'll explain that in a second. And then under type, um, we can choose different types of, of uh, construction. Um, this corresponds, this, this will add a different heat transfer coefficient for the air films in the construction, which, ha which will have a very slight effect on the overall U value. Um, but since this is a facade, I'm going to go ahead and um, keep it at facade. And we can look at, by placing a panel on the canvas, the, um, the name of the construction and the information about this construction, which really gives us a summary of the overall U factor for the entire assembly. So it's 0.35. So we looked at how to create a very simple um, construction using um, using the grasshopper components, using the layers, and we've, we've used a, a new material that we've created in our library to do so. But since we, for this example, we're looking at a stud wall and it's taken at the, the path of the insulation. Um, if we were to make a stud wall, we, we would want to take into account the thermal bridging um, that is owing to the, the actual studs in the wall. And, and Arxum has a component to accomplish this. It's the thermal bridge component. And I'll create an effective construction that takes into account that thermal bridge by using this component here. And so I'll, I'll place this here on the canvas. And so what we would expect is that we, by taking into account the studs in this wall, we would, we would have a, a higher U value. And this, will, this component will create this um, effective construction for us. So what we need to do is plug in um, our primary construction, which will be the stud wall, the insulation. The construction output goes into the construction input. And then we need a construction at the thermal bridge. And so that will be an identical construction to this um, stud wall uh, construction at the insulation, except instead of the insulation at the cavity, um, we'll go ahead and just make this a stud. So in, uh, the, instead of having 3.5 inches of insulation for the fiberglass, I will select this and I'll select one of the um, wood materials to basically, uh, to basically consider the thermal bridging through a, a wood stud wall. And so now you can see that instead of the, the middle material being fiberglass, 
Here our middle material is pine wood. It's got the same thickness. And you can see the U value is quite higher because this path, so we have, a, we have parallel paths of heat transfer. We have the path through the insulation and we have the path through the studs. The path through the studs has a much higher U value. It's much more conductive. And I'll plug this um, construction output into the bridge input. And then we have to tell this thermal bridge component what is the area fraction of the thermal bridge? So how much of our wall is actually the, the wood stud um, portion? And I should actually ch make sure to change this name. So stud wall at stud, at wood stud. So how much of our wall is the wood stud um, as opposed to the insulation? And I'll go ahead and place a, a panel on the canvas. I'll choose a conservative um, framing factor of 20%. It's a, it's a fraction between 0 and 1, so 20% would be expressed as 0.2. And I'll plug that into the area fraction input. And I will place another panel on the canvas to give this material or this construction assembly a name. So I'll call it stud wall with thermal bridge. And I'll plug that into the um, name input. Now we can compare our overall effective U value to the U value that we saw before. And uh, I can do that by plugging in the info um, output into the U value input. And now you can see that the stud wall with thermal bridge construction, considering the thermal bridge, 20% uh, framing factor for the wood, we have an effective higher U value here. It's um, 0 0.4 now instead of 0 0.35. Now, um, remembering back to this library component, in order, to, in order to actually input this construction assembly into our library, we need to connect the construction output into the construction input of the library. Otherwise, it, it won't be recognized in our simulations. Now I can access the library or, or place a thermal zone component onto the canvas. And by looking at the settings and going to constructions, I can see that under facade, um, well, in fact, for any of these material, um, these services, I will now have my new construction here on the list, stud wall with thermal bridge. I'll be able to use this for a simulation. Now that we've done some um, custom materials and we made a custom opaque material construction assembly with um, a thermal bridge, let's look at how to create custom glazings. So to do that, I'll place the simple window component onto the canvas. So the simple glazing component works using three primary inputs, the solar heat gain coefficient, the overall U value of the glazing assembly, and the visible light transmittance of the glazing assembly. Now it's important to keep in mind that the U value, uh, it's, this is just a single U value for whatever glazing material that, um, that we're prescribing. And it's up to the user to decide whether or not this is going to consider the, the frame or, or just the glass. Because as you'll remember in the window component under the settings, we have the um, ability to select a glazing construction and then we can also include a window frame with its own width, width and um, conductance to be considered or not in our simulation. For this tutorial, I'll go ahead and create um, a, a window assembly that does consider the frame. So I'll continue to leave this window frame um, off. Now um, we can get information for these three values from, again, from manufacturer's data for uh, window performance. Um, we can also reference the data sets that come with Energy Plus. So if I go back to that Energy Plus data sets folder, um, instead of referencing the Handbook of uh, Fundamentals Materials IDF file, we can scroll down to the Window Constructs IDF file. Um, if I edit that with my text editor, I can view it as, um, as text. And um, here we see that there's a very long list of, of, window, um, of window types, window constructions. And each construction is preceded by a, a combination of U-factor solar heat gain coefficient, trans solar transmittance, and um, uh, visible light transmittance, and so you have the these first two, the U factor, the solar heat gain coefficient, and the the um, T vis would be the three inputs that we would need for our um, our window assembly. So if you if you'd like to use one of these materials, here is um, an already constructed list where we can just find the the glazing that we'd like. For example, um, we can go find a, a kind of double glazing that that suits my project and input the the values um, accordingly. 
Um, we can also use a, a, a software called Windows that's um, that is created by um, LBNL, and here's the the software already open. Um, here's the website where um, the software can be downloaded by LBNL Lab. This is a, a program that has a, a wide variety of glazing types um, and frame types as well, and you can construct your own window, including the the, the actual glazing type, the the IGU type, as well as the frame, and calculate total window results for U factor for solar heat gain coefficient and for visible light transmittance. And you can see that I've already set one up here using this tool just for today's tutorial. I've created one that is um, that I'm going to use to reference for the um, example office that we looked at uh, for the Diva tutorials, where it's kind of like a curtain wall with mullions spaced every 1.5 meters. So here's a three by three module with a intermediate vertical mullion, um, aluminum frame with thermal break, and uh, a glazing that is like a double uh, a double IGU with um, a, with low emissivity coating and argon fill. And I've calculated the total results, and I'll use these numbers for my um, for my inputs for the simple glazing. So I'll go ahead and make the, the U factor 1.9, solar heat gain coefficient 0.36, and the visible light transmittance 0.65. And I'll give this a name. For the name, I'll call it, um, let's see, aluminum frame. I want to make sure that um, I remember that for this particular glazing type, it does consider the frame. Um, double low E argon. And then I'll, I'll also indicate the, um, the U factor, which is U 1.9, um, the solar heat gain coefficient of 0 0.36 and the T vis of 0 0.65. That way I can have a little bit of a sense of of what the performance is of this glazing when I choose it. So I will uh, go ahead and now plug in this glazing construction into the construction input of my library. Now with that input I could look at my window settings and now for the glazing construction, if I scroll down here, you can see that the aluminum frame double low E argon construction that I just made is now showing up in my, um, in my materials list. Great, now we do have to go over creating custom schedules, but since I'm running low on time for this particular tutorial, I'll cover that in our next um, tutorial. So in, in today's tutorial, we looked at how to create some custom materials, how to create custom opaque material construction assemblies and also take into account thermal bridging for our, these assemblies. And we looked at how to generate glazing material assemblies using the simple glazing component. Thanks a lot and please join us for our next tutorial.